Good afternoon, everyone. This is Kim Schmidt. I'm the executive editor of Farm Equipment Magazine. Welcome to our latest webinar, What You Absolutely Need in Your Business Continuity Plan in conjunction with DIS. Today's presenter is John Anderson, a dealership consultant with 35 years of experience in the heavy equipment dealership market space. Before John gets started with his presentation, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. On your screen, there's a control panel with a Q&A icon. You can submit questions here at any time during the presentation, uh, and we will try to answer those um, as we go. And then, as always, we are recording today's webinar, and it'll be shared with everyone who registered uh, in the event you want to rewatch it later or share it with anyone else at the dealership. All right, we are ready to get started. Thanks again for joining us, and you can take it away, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I hope I can keep your attention because I think what we have coming up um, for the next half hour, hour, as long as we can uh, keep everybody's interest and have questions, um, is probably a critical subject. And uh, it, 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 I actually wanted to retitle it to, first of all, um, why you need to have a plan. And then we can talk about what you need to have in your plan. Before I get too far down there, um, I thought I'd just take a few minutes and uh, explain to you, uh, you know, who I am and, and, and how I came to be here. Um, I started in the heavy equipment and agricultural equipment industry um, more than 35 years ago. I was one of the original partners in a company called PFW Systems. Um, and uh, at, during that time, I was their chief evangelist and responsible for software um, visions and uh, customer relationships and, and making sure that we had the right software that we needed for customers. So over the course of my my uh, tenure there, I think uh, I lost track after 500 or 600 dealerships that I had spent time in. Um, so my focus has always been from the dealership. I've done everything from work behind the parts counter to, you know, open repair orders and be a service advisor. Um, and of course, uh, I, I love to sell things. So I got involved with the sales team fairly early on. Um, so that's kind of where I come from. Um, the Subject matter for today is is really kind of interesting in the sense that uh, it's one of those things that people don't listen to until they need it. And and, and uh, Kim and I were just talking about uh, offline about um, the way that the world changes and uh, and what your expectations are and and the way that we deal with data now. And I think the best example of that was a question I had. If if you can stop and think for a minute, which would you rather lose your wallet or your telephone? Um, and I think for me, um, it's generally I don't want to lose my telephone because so much of what I do on a day to day basis is in my phone. If I lose my wallet, um, I can call somebody and cancel my credit cards. I can call and get, you know, uh, replacement IDs. I can follow up on everything that I had there. If I lose my telephone, I don't even begin to know who to talk to. Um, I'm not sure where to go. And in fact, um, depending on how much you use technology, you may not be able to start your car. In my case, I might not be able to get in my house. Um, I, I would say I could just call my wife, but I don't know what her cell phone number is either um, because she's just an icon on my phone to push. So we, we rely so heavily on technology right now, and we just assume that it's going to be there all the time. Um, and I love this screen because it says, let, you know, let's face it, uh, system interruptions happen. And and, and I, th I think really what you need to talk about is what does a system interruption look like? Because they can be from mildly inconvenient um, to the kind of interruption that can that can really be a, a multi-day outage and, and, and cripple your business. And I can give you a couple examples of this because the first thing everybody comes to mind with is, um, you know, it's been a cyber attack or a ransomware attack. Um, or we've been hacked, um, and you hear of it regularly now. In fact, most recently, um, CDK, primarily from the automotive side of their business, uh, had a cyber incident that brought somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000 rooftops specializing in, in you know automotive dealerships, so car dealers. Uh, it brought them to their knees for over seven days. So there was an extended outage. Um, enough of an outage now that you know financial analysts are saying it could actually have a bearing on on the GDP numbers that come out um, because that seven days there was no financial transactions happening um, that needed to happen in the in the dealerships. And everyone goes, well, that's great. It's not going to happen to me. You know, I don't have a system in the cloud. My system sits locally, so I'm safe. We do adequate backups. There is there are so many variables that potentially could take you out. 
Um, and this year, it became apparent really early on when they started forecasting the earliest hurricane season uh, that's ever come in. So if you're on the eastern seaboard, you're well aware of, of keeping your eyes to the east and see what comes off the ocean. Um, you only have to turn the TV on on a Monday morning to hear about tornadoes coming up and down and the widening of Tornado Alley um, and things being taken out there. Of course, we've got wildfires uh, raging in California and, and uh, Western Canada. It 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 could be something um, catastrophic like that, but it also could be something as simple as a local power grid going out. Um, we had situations where a backhoe loader has cut an internet line into a relatively small town and brought the entire town to its knees. So really what we want to talk about is uh, not can it happen, um, because I don't think that's the question today. I think that the question today is um, when it happens, how are you going to take care of it? And the most significant thing that you can do is have some kind of a plan. Um, so what I'm going to challenge you to do in the next few minutes is to think to yourself what it would be like if you showed up in the dealership uh, you know, on a Monday morning with your keys in hand and unlock the door only to open the door and find out that you didn't have any of your usual systems. So we can start with power outages um, because that's pretty simple. You know, daylight will break soon enough and we'll be able to see what's going on. We have generators, we can have emergency lighting. Um, but what happens when a system goes down? Um, what does it look like to you when you don't have a system in place? And again, it's pretty simple to say this won't happen to us. Um, I use the CDK example. Um, I will tell you that while that was an, primarily on the automotive side, there were um, close to a thousand rooftops on the ag and construction side that were interrupted. Um, and by interrupted, they went one day down with no system. Uh, second day, they had a single user allowed to sign on to their system. And then after that, it was, you know, users by branch and, and, and it came back up. But, but really the question is, even for that one day, even for half a day, even for a few hours, what do you do when you don't have access to your um, critical infrastructure and the systems that you usually have in place? So we're going to talk about a few things that you can do to prepare. Um, and again, this is based on experience because I can tell you when that particular outage happened, my phone lit up like a Christmas tree. Um, and the first question was, um, what kind of backups do you have? Uh, so it's fine to have an electronic backup. Uh, and I think everybody should have backups. And, and if your system is being operated and stored in the cloud and you're relying on your supplier like DIS um, to, keep your, to keep your data secure and to keep your data backed up, that works great. Um, there still is the question of how do you get to that backup? How do you maintain, how do you get access? How do you uh, get your data tunnel um, to be able to operate the software? So really, we have to go back to some old school things that I think a lot of people, quite frankly, have even forgotten about. We used to call it a counter pad, um, and it was having a parts inventory pad, um, understanding that it could well be out of date um, and is probably out of date uh, the minute that you print it off. But it's better than having no inventory available and having no idea of bin locations, having no idea of where your parts are physically sitting or what quantities you have. So we believe, uh, I believe strongly that this is one of those things that should be put in a, a regular procedure, whether it's a nightly procedure or a weekly procedure that, that we produce our inventory pads um, and you don't have to print them off. Um, they can be saved onto a, a, a local hard drive. They can be printed off onto a, a USB stick. Um, if you want to print them off on paper, you know, if, if, you, if it's 50 or 100 sheets and it makes sense to have there uh, as a contingency plan, I think you should do it. But you want to make sure that you know where your quantities are. Um, you need to make sure that you know where the bin locations are and get some idea of what the pricing is. Um, because just because you're in a tragic or, um, you know, volatile situation doesn't necessarily mean that your customers are or are not. So in a lot of cases, your customers are going to rely on you even more so um, in times of a natural disaster or something like that. It's going to be the time that they're going to come to need to get, you know, whether it's parts for equipment, parts for generators or just general supplies. Now, the second thing that I think everybody should have is... is um, a very basic um, copy of your aged receivables or your customer information, um, because again, we won't have any reference with a with this with a system um, outage, uh, and 
whether it's caused by power, whether it's caused by communication, or whether it's caused by some um, ne'er-do-well, you know, ransomware attack, um, you still need to be able to make sure that you have some idea of who your customers are. Um, you need to keep the company in a position where they don't have to worry about, um, you know, overextending people or, or offering people credit that isn't there. So a simple aged receivable report um, and some kind of a basic customer list so that you can get some idea of, of where people are and what their statuses are. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real simple report that should be in place. The, the next thing that comes to mind is having some idea, and this is, again, depending on how long your outage is. If your outage is a day, you're probably okay. But if your outage runs for an extended period of time, then there's the concern of, of what you should keep for your greater business, and that would be um, equipment inventory. So do you have an idea of you know, what all your equipment is, you know, what's available, what's on rent, what's been floor planned, you know, what is our equipment, what's owned. Because again, just because your system is down, that may actually be the catalyst for you to be doing an awful lot more business. That may be the opportunity to have tractors out. That may be the opportunity to have um, machinery available or generators, things like that. So really important that you have this basic information also important that you have this basic information um, if, in fact, you're looking at an area where data could potentially be corrupted or destroyed. So it's really important that you have these kind of basic reports to be able to go back to those systems if you need them. So I think this is this is where things really kind of get interesting because everybody believes that um, if you're in the cloud, you're safe. And, and being in the cloud makes it easier for you um, to deal with securing your data. And I will tell you right now that um, all suppliers uh, do an excellent job of, step, of stepping up the security that's required to keep your information secure in the cloud. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not a case of can somebody get at it. Uh, it's a case of when someone will get at it, um, as was evidenced by the you know recent ransomware attacks and cyber attacks that have gone on. Just because your data is in the cloud doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have access to it. Um, so you need to make sure that, A, um, if you're going to use the cloud as your backup, you better have multiple entries into the cloud. In other words, you can't just say, oh, well, we have a communication line and a data line, and we're going to be connected no matter what happens. Um, because even though you're connected while it's happening uh, or disconnected, um, it's very easy that the cloud could be functioning and your data line could be down. And if your data line is down, then the next question is, you know, what can I use on top of that? So um, I don't know sure how many of you have gone through the experience and it happened in the last year where AT&T had a one day outage. Um, and it was suggested that that particular outage cost the United States um, almost $700 billion um, in lost revenue based on transactions. Now, the good news is all of those transactions got picked up subsequent days when systems came back up and online. But um, you can't just say it's always going to be there. We become so accustomed to it that we say, well, we're always going to have the Internet so I can get at it from a browser. Or, uh, you know, my cell phone's always going to be working so I can get at it from my cell phone. Um, and, and I've said the same thing. You don't need to necessarily print off paper documents, but have multiple ways to go at that particular information. So if there is a uh, an opportunity for you to have cloud access to your system, it's worth asking your suppliers, what is my, my backup cloud access? So if my router goes down and my typical communication line comes down, do I have web access? Um, do we have an opportunity to be able to get access through our cell phones um, if we're remote? Uh, I, I can tell you a story of a dealer. I'll leave their name out of it in um, Albany, Georgia, uh, that felt that they were secure because they did have a very fortress-like data center. Um, their system was inside of a a secured building inside of a secured um, part of that building, special air conditioning had everything taken into place, 
Um, I received a phone call from them that their system was down and they were going to be without their system for some extended period of time, um, even though it was being hosted locally. Uh, And their challenge was the Flint River had risen, uh, came up almost 12 feet, and that building was now underwater. So while the system was very secure, it was securely underwater, um, and it was going to take some time to do that. So in their case, instead of finding a cloud and trying to get locally, they had to figure out a way to get their data to the cloud. Uh, The good news for them was that they backed their data up to the cloud on a nightly basis. Um, So they were about seven hours out of sync um, by the time that they were able to get on their cloud. And they had pretty much half of their people up and using the system within six hours of the of the initial flood. So you really have to come to the conclusion and say, okay, so what's my plan A, my plan B and my plan C? It's not just a case of saying, hey, I, I, I want to have it. So that kind of kicks us back to these earlier screens when we talked about having electronic copies and we talk about receivables and an inventory pad. Um, you start talking about these kind of documents and, and they're absolutely requirements. And where are you going to put them on your system? And where are you going to put them on a cloud-based system? And then, of course, where are you going to keep them in paper uh, or print if you need to have them? So we put this together with, with DIS, and there is a, uh, a list of templates that we've put together um, specifically to talk about what kind of reports you would need, what kind of um, information you need. And this is something you probably need to go through on a department by department basis. So if you sat down with a with the parts department and said, OK, so in the unlikely event that we have no access to the system, um, what is the very basic information that we need? Um, there's a, there is a, a set of templates at the bottom that you can see that, that handle how you do transactions. Um, so we're going to need something to show received on accounts. We're going to have to have some kind of showing payments. Um, we're going to have to have some kind of a manual invoice form. If a customer comes in and needs something, I got to have a piece of paper that says what he bought and how he can sign it. Um, I'm going to need to have some kind of a clock in, clock out um, for some of my employees or subcontractors. Uh, I, I need to have uh, uh, distribution and order sheets. Uh, you know, so much of your ordering with your manufacturers, especially as is, is, is machine down orders, is done electronically. Um, if you're recording orders all day long, do you have a counter pad that says, here's the orders of recording and here's who they're for? So there's a number of physical pieces of paper that you need to be able to have so that when the power does come back on, when the connectivity is restored, when the system is available, I can go back through and and literally take this paperwork and start to resync and rebuild my systems. So there's a really, really big issue when it comes to what's the best way um, for us to be able to go through and build this plan. So what I would challenge people to do is go through on a department by department basis. Um, Shouldn't take long, more than a couple hour meeting, um, especially from your IT folks to come back and say, okay, so what is our contingency plan in the unlikely event that we can't get access to our business system? Uh, And, you know, decide what your threshold is. If if we don't have access to it within an hour for an hour, um, you know, this is this is kind of how we do it. Um, If it looks like uh, an extended outage, that's going to be more than six hours. uh, This is what we're going to use. And then I as much as it pains me to say you have to have a multi day plan. Um, So if we're going to be multiple days without. How are we going to operate to the best of our ability? Are you going to be as good as you expect to be? Is it going to be perfect? Absolutely not. Um, But you have to have some way of doing it. And I think the the, the important part for you to remember when you're doing this, and you need to bring it to everybody's attention, is this is an, an absolute insurance policy. It is not a case of when you're going to have if you're going to have an extended outage, you will have an extended outage at some point, whether it's intentional or unintentional, whether it's malicious or whether it's accidental. Um, There are too many contingency plans right now um, and too many opportunities for for, uh, points of failure for you to not um, be able to have an operating system if this happens to you. So that's, um, that's kind of the big piece. Kim, have you had any questions? Nothing yet. Wow. <laughs> okay, then I'm just going to assume that everybody is is a okay and already has a contingency plan in place. 
So I, I think then then probably what I want to do is is maybe go through it on a department by department basis and talk about the very basics that we that we need because um, and it's probably worth noting them. Um, the first thing that we are going to have to have is a master customer list um, so that we have that available for all of our departments. Um, so we'll work in the shop. The, the next thing that we're going to have to have is to make sure that we have a list of, um, first of all, who all of our technicians are, um, uh, all of our technicians, any certifications that we have to have with them and contact information for those technicians. Because remember, a lot of that stuff is held in the system. Um, so if we need to specify truck numbers or contact information for those um, particular technicians, we can. Um, along with my open work order register, I probably want to print off a, um, a a current, uh, let's call them closed but or build but not yet picked up work order list um, because uh, and again these these are things that could happen automatically as part of a batch run overnight. Um, they don't necessarily have to be printed; they just have to be um, generated so that you can pick them up either electronically um, or from another source. Once you've done that, um, I'm going to say for the most part. Uh, if as long as you've got a manual work order, so you need a template for a manual work order and a template for a manual time card, uh, you could probably go back and run a service department for two or three days without killing yourself. Um, so then if I go to the next step from that, I move to the parts department. In the parts department, um, same thing, I'm going to need to have a master list of customers. Um, as well as my counter pad. I'm just going to show price and availability um, and bin location for all of my particular parts. I need to have a blank or templated invoice so that I can be able to generate that for the customer. Um, I'm also going to need to have a blank or generated template to be able to do um, parts orders, to be able to order parts, particularly for customers. I think you should probably, in terms of you should also have a parts ready to be picked up. Um, so if you do have a current on order list or a receiving list, you can have that available. Um, and again, that can be done as part of a nightly backup run to be able to have your customers look at that um, every night when they are, anytime that they come in, if they're asking for parts, uh, it's not going to be a system down question. It's going to be a hang on, let me see when it was ordered. Um, and then we can go back and see whether it came in and, and who it was ordered for. When you move to the accounting side of things, I think it becomes significantly more difficult because from the accounting perspective, um, again, I have to have a full list of my customers. I also have to have a full list of my accounts receivable. I'm going to need to have manual templates to handle things like payments um, on account so that I can record those. Um, uh, I'm also going to need to have uh, a manual list of what my chart of accounts are. Um, I think I would have a template that shows me a... Uh, journal entry. If, if in fact, um, I'm going to have a multi-day outage and I'm going to need to keep track of um, receivables going in and out of the out of the bank, so cash on hand to receivables, receivables to um, ROA to to customers. Um, I think from the accounting side, I also will need to have a manual invoice um, to be able to handle special cases no and handle machine information as well at the same time. Um, I think once you've got that taken care of, you can move to the sales department. The sales department is going to have to have each and every um, inventory item listed out. So all of my existing inventory has got to be in place. Once I have my existing inventory in place, I can make sure that I have a manual invoicing function, again, a printed invoice for the customers to be able to use. Um, and then on top of that, after you've done all of that for each and every department, I would suggest to you that somewhere someone prints off a master list of key and contact phone numbers, um, yeah. because that's the critical piece. In, and it became a critical piece in three recent outages where the dealerships didn't necessarily have the phone numbers to be able to contact, whether it was um, whether it was the bank, whether it was specific employees or even be able to contact um, the supplier, the dealer, parts contacts, um, service advisors, service contacts, warranty administrators, uh, all of that stuff was held in systems. 
Um, and of course, when the systems are down, so is that. So um, it, it certainly makes it as something that you've got to be ready for. Um, so that's that's kind of where it is. So I, I you know, I, I'll just go back and say it again. If you don't have a plan, you are literally flying by the seat of your pants right now because there is a not a probability, there's a certainty that at some point you will not have access to your systems. And it could be a short-term outage or it could be a long-term outage. So operating without a business continuity plan um, is probably one of the simplest things to take a dealership down and, inc- and, and you know, destroy profitability, not just for a month, but it, it, in some cases it could take years to recover from this. So, um, you know, this is this is like insurance. And the fact that we just talked about it uh, makes it even worse Um, because, you know, this is this is the opportunity now for people to say, hey, how am I going to um, how am I going to handle, you know, a a straight power outage? How am I going to handle a cyber attack? How am I going to handle, you know, a natural disaster that's going to come through here? And better than that, these dealerships are also responsible for supporting their communities um, so if it's a community issue, it becomes even bigger because at the same time, they'll be coming to you for equipment. They'll be coming to you for solutions to the problems that they have. So I, I hate to say it, Kim, but that's what I've got. All right. All right. Well, I will I have a question of my own that I'll kick things off with. And then um, if anyone else has questions for John, you can submit them using that Q&A um, icon on your screen. Um, so is there, should dealerships, you know, they have the plan, they know where they're going to, um, have the system run to back it up or have these plans in place to have something outside of the system. Is there, you know, should we be identifying a single point person who then something happens and they're the one who makes sure we print up or locate where all of those pieces are? Is it something everyone in the dealership should know how to find, you know, or is it a select few? Well, I, th- I think the I think the problem is any time that you you know you just assume that everybody's going to take their responsibility. We know how that works out. Um, you know, s- somebody will forget their lunch that day, or 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 someone says, "Yeah, I was going to get to it." Something else came up. I think you have to charge somebody with the task. Um, I think it's as important as as putting in a, a you know a, a safety lead. Um, so in most dealerships, they have someone who's responsible for workplace safety, and they have contingency plans to make sure things are um, okay and from a safety perspective. I think you need to do the same thing from a continuity plan. I think there's somebody has to be able to to take responsibility. Um, and and, and I, again, I'm not saying it's shared by. It, it doesn't have to be a single person. It can be shared, you know, by two or three people. Um, that would just make sense so that you have some backup. Because with my luck, you know, the person in charge of it would be the person that wasn't there that day. Right. Um, so you, you know, you you want to have those those plans in place. But it, it the hard part is to get people to understand that this is absolutely critical to your business. Uh, you, I, and and it, it it comes back to what it's going to be like if you lose your phone. Um, and, and from your business, what's it going to be like if you lose your business system? Can you still operate? Um, there's a there's a number of people there that are old school that say, hey, I can still do this. I can tell you in the construction industry, there are technicians that that if they don't have access to the Internet, they can't repair specific pieces of equipment. Um, it's, it's, you know, that's how they get parts catalogs. That's how they get, um, you know, um, repair instructions. That's how they get warranty information. Uh, that's, that's how they get diagrams, uh, schematics. There's so many things to look at. Uh, and, and I think the most important thing is people are saying, Hey, it's, it's never going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to me. I don't need to worry about it. And that's really sticking your head in the sand because, um, whether you have a server on site or whether you have a server in the cloud. And I think this is the other part. This server in the cloud has given everybody kind of this uh, false sense of security, right? Because I don't have to worry about natural disaster now because I know that my server is being stored in a state-of-the-art data center in, you know, Romulus, Michigan, that's got five points of entry and 10 security guards. And I don't have to worry about anything. Um, that's, That's true. But the line coming to you can be cut. It's it's one line. And what's it going to be like if you have to wake up and not have your system there? And, uh, you know, you and I talked about it. Um, 
phone numbers, are, it, it's so funny to hear people talk about phone numbers. Um, any old parts guy can tell you he probably knew his top 100 customers knew their phone numbers by heart. You pick up the phone and you dial it. Um, those people are few and far between now because now the answer is it's programmed into the computer or it's programmed into my cell phone and I just hit their name and it calls them. I don't know their numbers. Um, you know, I can probably tell you my best friend's number from being a kid or my childhood telephone number or my parents' phone number when I was, you know, off to college. I, I don't think I can tell you my kid's phone number anymore um, because they change it. Um, I don't, you, you know, they got they got a phone after I had a cell phone. So I just programmed it in there one time. They told me what their phone number is. And I never bothered to remember it anymore. All right. Uh, we just got one come in. Uh, question is, we're running on a backup internet connection right now. Have, oh, so more just a statement. So a good example, they're running on a backup system right now and have been since Tuesday. So, And, 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 and so whoever okay. that is, c- congratulations to them um, because that, that's one of the first things that, that people – don't consider is the fact that probably your most fragile part of your business system is actually your connection to the cloud. Um, and, 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 you know, again, in, in rural areas, you're responsible. You have, you have a one small phone company um, that's tagged to a larger phone company. And there's so many connections down the line where things can go wrong. And, and, you know, some of these solutions are really simple. Some of these things are, 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 are things that people should think about um, in my house. And I can't really hold it up on the screen right now, but in, in my house, I have backup internet connections. Um, while I have a great fiber and real fast speed and everything else, um, for $46 a month, I can add a secondary line that's a different form of communication. So if you're using, you know, a dedicated cell service or a dedicated um, a line, a DSL line to be able to get back and forth to the cloud, that's awesome until that line goes down. What is your backup? And I would say right now, and I'm not trying to sell anybody anything, but you know, there are alternatives like Starlink. You can put Starlink up for $140 a month and have a high-speed connection to be able to fall back on if, in fact, something bad happened in the dealership, like the user who said that to you. Um, phone lines are cut. Satellite system's still up. I still have some way of doing, you know, business. Would it be slower? Probably. Would it be as fast as what you'd like? No. Um, you know, I talked about the, the uh, cyber incident that CDK had. Um, the fact that the automotive dealers had no access to their systems, um, they would have killed to be like the ag and construction folks who had one user um, because at least one user was able to look up the phone number to, to who do I call and, and how do I put another system in place or, or, or be able to print, start printing those reports that we talked about because they didn't have them. Um, and I'm, I, I won't drop names because it's, it's not fair to the people that weren't prepared. But I can tell you some of the largest, and Kim, I mentioned it to you earlier, some of the largest, um, most sophisticated agricultural equipment distributors uh, w- were caught with, what do you mean I can only have one user access the system? Um, and and it's, a, it's a big deal for them. So that, you know, to that person, kudos to you. Great idea. I should have brought that up and, and I missed it. But you should have a backup internet connection. Um, and I would say you should even go further. And that's why I would also say, you know, one of the questions I would have is um, if I can't have complete access to my system, what kind of cell phone access can I have to my system? Just to be able to get rudimentary information. That's it. Not a, not a question, but another um, just example that someone has had in real life. Uh, this person said they've had a server that was on site that went down. They had to send it in to be repaired and they were down for a week because the server was being repaired. Exactly. So, and and again, um, not knowing who the supplier is, there's a specific information to it. In most cases, if you've got an adequate backup to a server, and even if you don't, here's, so a lot of times if you have server on site and the server goes down, it's not a case of they can't repair it. It's a case of your server's old. They don't even have it anymore. They don't know what they're going to replace it with. Um, so that so the answer will be well I'll move you to the cloud oh that's great move me to the cloud okay that's going to take us seven days to do the file conversions and get you up to the cloud and then we have to get a line in you know get your modems set up on both end and your routers get everything set so you can do it so it's not an instantaneous thing to have happen so being able to have those manual reports uh, I know a dealer in Michigan who 
contacted us one day because they went in and the server was safe, um, stored offsite. The backup was stored offsite, but the server was in the building and the building burned down. Now, they were back up and running in a week. I have to tell you, from complete devastation to up and running in a week, uh, wasn't that bad. You know, when, when you show up and all you've got is a, a, a pile of small, smoldering embers, to know that you can be back up and functioning, they functioned out of a trailer, um, you know, but they were able to at least take care of things that were in the yard and get people's equipment back to them. So, um, this individual had a follow up to their their statement. So, would you expect a DBS provider to handle the cloud side of things in that case when the the server itself went down and needed to be sent out for repair? Yes. Yeah, so, I In the case of, of, you know, you're in an emergency position, everybody starts looking at each other and pointing fingers. Um, and that, that's the worst thing you can do. So I would say that, you know, if your server goes down and, and it's a localized server, you should be able to call whoever your DBS supplier is and say, hey, listen, I'm in a catastrophic situation. I need your help. And, and I can tell you, having worked for quite literally all of them, so uh, CDK, DIS, um, E emphasis. Uh, I didn't work for HBS, but I have a lot of friends who do. Every one of those people will can give you an all hands on deck, um, so they can get people to help you restore systems. Um, they have temporary systems. They all have cloud based systems that they could move you to for a temporary position. Um, you know, I, I can't say that it's easy, uh, and I can't say that you, it's one of those things where you just flip a switch and you're going to be there. But if if you're in that situation, I think it's I think it's 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 a team environment. You can't just expect you, you know you can't hand it to the to the dealer system supplier and say uh, my server's gone down you fix it um, it'd be nice if you could um, but at the same time you can't expect them to say hey you have a server on site that's your problem um, mm -hmm. because it's not you're still their customer and you're always going to be their customer so you know they have a fiduciary responsibility to help you out to whatever degree they can right anyone else have any questions or just experiences they wanted to share Give it a few seconds. Well, I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna save you some time for people telling you the experiences because I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you first of all I've seen floods, I told you that, um, and that was the Flint River, so you can go up and down find which dealership it is if you want to know. Um, I, I, I have seen fires that happened in the Irish Hills in Michigan. So you can probably figure out who that dealer was if you go back and look up a few years history. Um, we had an incident in Chicago where a helicopter actually had a an unscheduled landing uh, in a dealership. And, and, and it didn't affect the dealership so much as it took out all of the um, utilities coming to the dealership. So internet, phone lines, um, power, everything coming into the dealership. Um, we have had a theft. Uh, so most crooks now are smart enough to understand that if they don't know what the system is or how it operates. Um, but there's a lot of times where uh, somebody would come into a dealership and they thought, oh, this looks heavy. Uh, it's got a lot of flashing lights, should be worth something. So they unplugged that and took that off. We recovered that one. Uh, that was recovered from a field. And to the person who said, should the uh, should the dealer business system supplier help out? In that case, we had to because that particular customer didn't have a backup. Um, so we actually had to take the hard drives out of that unit and move it to another unit to try and restore it um, so that we could get them back in business at the same time. Um, I'm just trying to think of all the, I was going to say, cool disasters we've had. Um, but there, 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 there are things that can happen in the dealership um, daily. And it, it, quite frankly, it surprises me that we don't hear more of, hey, I'm down because of this or I'm down because of that. Um, you know, most of the time what you're hearing about is communication issues now because it's in the cloud. Um, so I keep coming back to that first person. I, you know, if I had a gold star, they'd be one getting the gold star because they had a backup Internet connection. Because I wonder how many dealers today, if you talk to them um, and really have a backup communication strategy. I mean, how many people are dealing with two separate communications? And if you do, and Kim, this is critical, putting in having AT&T lines and saying, okay, so we've got dedicated AT&T lines and we've got 
you know, dedicated uh, bell lines coming in at the same time. So some local provider and a national provider coming in at the same time. The problem is you need to ask those people really relevant questions. Where is the head end to your line? Because what you'll find is most of those lines, uh, they might make it to the edge of town. By then, they're all they're all put together and they're riding down the same pipe. Um, and it and we've seen it before where somebody takes that pipe out as simple as a backhoe loader digging by the side of the road and, and they cut a line and the entire city goes down. So when you're talking about having backups, you need to have backups that are different than your primary. Right. So that's why I brought Starlink up as an example. Um, it's, again, not perfect and not cheap. Um, but if you use it on a limited basis, it would probably work well to get you through a couple of days. That's why I talked about cell backups. Most of the major cellular carriers now will say, hey, you can have a cell backup for $60, $80, $100 a month and know that you always have cell service to connect to um, to be able to get that backup. So that that was a that's a good point. And I will put that in my future presentation so I don't miss it. All right. Well, nothing else came in while you were kind of sharing those uh horror stories, we'll call them, cool story, <laughs> whatever, whichever angle you want to take. Um, so thank you, John, for, for sharing all of that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the presentation will be available on the Farm Equipment website in the event you want to go back and watch it. And we should have the replay out to everyone who registered in the next 48 hours. On behalf of John, the DIS team, and our Farm Equipment staff, thank you for joining us today. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. And thanks again, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day.